welcome to the first episode of Board Game Report. I'm your host, Andy Josephson, also known as Blisbjorn on Board Game Geek. This time I'm going to take a look at Forestrons, a cooperative game, uh, somewhat family oriented, but with enough uh, meat to it to be an enjoyable game for also seasoned gamers. The theme of this game is that you uh, together run a restaurant in the forest, catering to all the different animals living there. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, they uh, can order in time, that they can get their uh, dishes served in time, and that they then leave happy and uh, maybe leave a uh, positive review on uh, some social media. Uh, when it comes to cooperative games, uh, I have my youngest daughter, she, she loves cooperative games. She's eight, turning nine now, and she's still, you know, in that little bit sensitive age where you don't want to lose, you, you want to win. And uh, cooperative games is a good, uh, um, you know, um, solution then, because you know, either you win all together or you lose all together. That's much easier to manage. And I mean, it's nothing wrong with cooperative games. They're quite fun. Uh, so how did I come in contact with Forestfront? Well, when I was in Essen uh, last autumn, uh, 2018, I uh, passed by this uh, stall with a Hungarian publisher who had very different games. It was like a war game, you had this restaurant, there was a, was a small card game with dogs and, and a couple of others. Um, and uh, I became interested in uh, first a uh, dog card game because it seemed like uh, my kids love animals and it seemed like a nice light family game that I could play with them and it was easy to bring along. And uh, then I saw Forestfront, and then I became really interested because that looked really cool. Uh, as this company doesn't have that wide distribution, uh, I really felt that I wanted to bring their games to a wider audience or bring some attention to it. So I asked them to, uh, uh, you know, get a discount. Uh, for reviewing the games, and uh, they were kind enough to to give me that, and I promised to make these reviews, and now it's it's gone way too long. Uh, but as this game still isn't that widely uh, distributed, I think uh, it's still valid to make this kind of early review. Um, the company that uh, the uh, publishes the game is called. Uh, Cogitate Games, and as I said, they're Hungarian-based. Uh, when it comes to uh, cooperative games, I just want to mention uh, some other games that my kids like, uh, so you can compare it to Forestfront. Um, Pandemic, I haven't really introduced them. Pandemic is uh, one of the most, uh, you know, well-gone, well-known and the highest rated uh, cooperative board games. Um, I think the theme is a little bit too abstract uh, with the cubes representing uh, these diseases and so forth. So when I found Flashpoint Fire Rescue, which in many ways share the same uh, mechanics as um, um, Pandemic, but here you are a team of firefighters uh, trying to rescue people that are stuck in a burning building. I became more interested and I bought this and my kids love it. They absolutely love it. They want to play it all the time. And there are several different uh, levels of complexity here. You have a beginner's game and we play that for a couple of times, but then my nine year old, she was like, bring it dad. So uh, now we play with all the rules. And I also have the, uh, um, Kickstarter expansion that came uh, a while ago uh, that brings, you know, uh, event cards and a lot of other stuff. But we play with it all and she loves it. And also uh, her older sister, who's turning 13 this year, uh, is also a big fan of this game. So um, 
I, I recommend this, really. And the theme is so, you know, self-explanatory and the actions and everything. It's, you know, you, you get it. So that's, uh, I just wanted to mention Flashpoint. And uh, she also loves uh, Mansions of Madness, uh, which, uh, you know, it's a little bit long for her, but she, she loves it anyway. And uh, also when she turned seven, she said, Dad, I want a board game for my birthday. And I was like, okay, what kind of board, uh, what kind of board game do you like? Well, uh, I want a game where you kill monsters. Okay. And uh, it has to be miniatures and a map and uh, cooperative. Okay. So uh, I thought for a while and I ended up with uh, Wrath of a Shadowlon, the uh, D&D board game. And that is also a s enorm, huge hit. Uh, my daughter loves it and it's become the uh, daddy-daughter game. Nobody else is allowed to play it and we've been playing the campaign and uh, it's a huge hit too. So um, just some, some tips there. But back to Forest uh, We're gonna move over now to the setup video. Uh, part of this show is that I wanna make a, a setup video that show how long it takes to set up the game. And sometimes I have to refer to rule books and so forth, but I think that brings a, um, a feeling of how complex it is and uh, uh, you know, where there are some new shade that you need to take into account. Uh, I do this setup video in, uh, you know, in a high speed, uh, fast forward fashion, just with a timer so you can see how, how it works and how long time it takes. So it's not a full explanation of the setup. Then we're gonna go into a uh, explanation of the game I explain the rules and I do a turn or two so you get a feeling for the game. It's definitely not a full playthrough, but it is a rules overview. And then after that, I have a reboxing video or uh, a, you know, a, a breakdown video where I take all the components and put them back in the box and so. Because I think both, both the setup and the tear down processes are important. Uh, Practice when it comes to enjoying a game. Uh, there might be games that take, you know, 20 minutes to set up and you play them for an hour, or an hour and a half, and then you have 20 minutes tear down. And that's a lot of, you know, logistics to play a game. And then you have other games that you set up in 30 seconds or a minute, and you have just as long play, play time and you have a tear down that's very, very short and simple. And then, of course, you have much more entertainment value out of the game. So, set up in high speed, rules explanation, and tear down at high speed. And then I'll come back and give some opinions on the game. Let's play for restaurant. In this cooperative game, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, you as players help each other to run what hopefully is going to become the forest's most popular restaurant. In this game, there will be guests arriving at restaurants, they will take their seats, they will mull over the menu, and once they're happy about their choice, they're going to uh, call for a waiter. Uh, the waiter will come and take their order and uh, in this uh, menu pile or pile of different uh, dishes you can order, uh, you will then keep drawing until you find a matching card with one of the, with the animal here. So luckily enough we have a, a wolf already on top. We look at what that wolf is interested in eating, or this party of four wolves, actually. actually. Uh, that wolf is interested in um, steak and eggs. We are then 
shopping, we'll go shopping for the ingredients, or we could have shopped for them earlier, and uh, we will have ingredients on hand here, and we, if we have the right ingredients, for example, steak and eggs here, uh, then we will be able to make that dish, and we will serve the customer, and they will eat the food, become happy, and leave the place. And that is the flow of the game. Uh, what's the challenge then? The, well, the challenge is that if we make the customers wait for too long, they will become unhappy. They will gather these clouds. And if they have a cloud on them when they leave the restaurant, they will give you a bad review on uh, Forest Square, as it's called here, or Yelp or whatever, and that will cover star. And if you uh, lose all your stars and another cloud is to be added here, then you immediately lose the game. Um, there is also one more thing to take into consideration, and that is that there are carnivores and there are herbivores and they have predator-prey relations. So basically you have the large carnivores, the red ones, you have the large herbivores that are the uh, blue ones, you have the small carnivores that are the yellow ones, and then finally you have the green ones which are the small uh, herbivores. And the predator-prey relationship is rather simple. Large, if you're larger or equal size, then you as a predator or as a carnivore will be interested in eating. So the large, the red ones, will always be a threat to the all the herbivores. The small uh, carnivores will only be a threat to the small herbivores. So... These one will ne ones will negatively affect each other, these ones will negatively affect each other, and these ones will negatively affect each other. It uh, might be a little tricky to remember the first time, and especially if you play it with kids, but you soon get a hang of it. Just think about what you, uh, the preference when it comes to food and the size. Um, the, car the game is card-driven, as you might understand. Um, it starts with one guest in the middle and each player having a number of cards in hand depending on the number of players. Um, when it comes to your turn, you will first draw a card. Uh, apart from getting this card in hand, it will also tell what part of the restaurant will be activated. So in this case, row six will be activated. This means that these four wolves, they're still sitting there mulling over their uh, menu. If row number five would have been activated, I drew five, then that wolf um, party would have decided that now we're interested in ordering. Uh, if I haven't taken the order before uh, number five or two is uh, drawn and this become activated again, then they will be unhappy. Uh, I will serve them, they will get their uh, they, no, sorry, they, uh, I, I will uh, take their order and like this. And once again, if they become activated before I've been able to make their food, then they will get another of these clouds. And uh, then I make the food, I serve them and they become, they eat, they enter the table and they're happy. And when next time they become activated, they will leave the restaurant. If there are no clouds on it, well, then we're happy. If there is one cloud on it, uh, it will give a bad review. The customers will give a bad review. If there are two clouds, one will be returned here to the mushroom track and one will be a bad review. If I am really careless, uh, then while the guest is at the restaurant and gets uh, his, uh, their third or fourth or fifth cloud, they would probably have been waiting so long, so they've taken out their cell phones and started giving bad reviews already. So this one, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth one, will immediately go to the stars here. And as I mentioned, this is a way of losing the game. Uh, once you have uh, covered all the stars and you would get another star, you immediately lose the game.
The second way to lose the game is to have emptied the mushroom track. If the restaurant is full of furious customers, then you lose the game immediately. The third way of losing the game is when you go through this stack of customer cards and uh, you empty it, then you take 20 of these cards, reshuffle them and make a new pile. And if you go through that without winning the game, you also lose because you spent too much time without being able to build a solid reputation. How do you win then? Well, there are eight types of animals, uh, two for each category here. And to win, you need to serve all eight types of animals. You collect them when they leave the restaurant. And you need to have at least five points in each type. Then you win the game. If you have uh, uh, established a solid reputation, you're not uh, the five-star restaurant, you will not be in the Michelin, Guide de Michelin, but you will you know, be able to run a good enough restaurant. The other way is, of course, to strive for the top. And that means that you have all the clouds on the mushroom track. So you have five-star rating and all the customers in the restaurant are happy. Then you also immediately win the game. The mushroom track is, of course, uh, as, uh, signifies how uh, bad or good you're doing at the restaurant, but also it decides how many cards you get to draw at the end of your turn. So the worse you get, the more cards you draw, one and finally three cards. Um, the game starts, as I already mentioned, uh, with one animal in the center here. And uh, I will draw a card now. And I drew another fox here. So I have uh, three, uh, four small carnivores. I have one large carnivore and I have a large um, herbivore. This one cares about this one. This one don't care about anyone here because they're too small. As I drew a, did I draw three? Yeah, I think I draw three. Uh, this one, this row gets activated. That means they have still not decided. So the only thing I can do, because what I can do during turn is that I can either seat a guest, uh, I can take an order if there is a, a bell on a guest, and uh, I can go shopping for food, or I can make the food and uh, bring that food to the guest. And the only thing now I can do is either seat guests or uh, go shopping for food. When seating guests, I need to take into consideration the number because that's the number of guests that comes and you need to have enough chairs. So this single uh, diner here um, will to say diner in English, well, anyway, single guest, uh, can sit, sit anywhere. But this party of six need to be sit, sit here or here, or if this is available here. The other thing is the predator-prey relationship. So if I place this herbivore here, that's in a predator-prey relationship with the uh, big bad wolf. If I place her here or here or here or here, that is next to, he will become a little bit angry because he doesn't like these types coming to the restaurant, which means that he will gain a irritation or anger marker. So I need to take that into consideration. Uh, of course, I want to place highest number because then I need to serve fewer customers, but they're also more difficult to serve, uh, which I will uh, show you. So let's take this little fox here, the fox doesn't matter where I place her, so I'm going to place her here. How many actions do I have per turn? Well, it depends on the number of cards. Uh, I have one card to few. And three play game, you start with six cards, you draw a card at the beginning of the turn, so, and the minimum hand size I'm allowed to have is four cards, which means that I have potentially three actions to make during a turn. Um, at the end of the turn, I only draw one card. So if I do all three actions, I will only have five cards and draw one, so I will only have six cards. That means only be able to do two actions next turn. So it's a little bit here. Um, in the beginning, it's not 
a lot of stress. So, uh, but you know, uh, I know that she will be interested in food sooner or later. So I might as well go shopping. Um, if I want to shop for meat products, then I need to play a, a carnivore. That is a red or yellow card. If I want to get vegetables, it's a blue or green card, one of the herbivore cards. And I draw as many tiles as the number on it. So I draw an egg, I draw bacon, and I draw another egg. The number of um, ingredients that we love to store between turns uh, is dependent on number of players. So in a three-player game, I'm allowed to have six ingredients between turns. And now I'm not going to do anything else, so I'm going to draw a card, and that's the end of my turn. Uh, next player's turn is going to be uh, that he draws the two, so two gets activated. Hmm, that means that both these parties have decided what to eat. They expect to, for us to come and take their order. And now things get, might get a little bit stressful because next turn, if we draw two, that's the worst scenario, five or six. That means that we have a 50% chance or risk, however you see it, that this will, um, something will happen here. Uh, and if we haven't taken the orders, they will be irritated. So we need to take the orders. And the only thing we need to consider here is the type of animal. The number is irrelevant. So if I send an, a waiter that's in a predator-prey relationship with the guest I'm taking the order from, then they will be also irritated because we, you know, we hire those kind of animals. So they will uh, add a cloud to them. But in this case, my, my co-player here have a, a, um, a wolf. So we can take this order or this order. Let's take the order from the wolf. And then we have to check the, uh, what wolf is interested in. And that means I, we need to flip these cards, the menu cards, until we find a wolf image. Here's a wolf image. So this wolf has decided on chicken and bacon. Uh, must be an amazing dish, you know, both chicken and bacon. Um, so he has decided. She also, or the party of foxes has decided. So, and uh, the, the fox, it's, all, it's already on top. So it's just to add here. And they're going for egg and bacon. So either they have a late breakfast or the wolf here has an early lunch. And... Um, now, my, my co-player is very interested in getting, of course, ingredients here. So, uh, and play, we'll be playing this um, eagle three. So, we'll take three tiles, egg, steak, and steak. Okay. Um, we have managed to uh, give them this, but still, if if they get activated this turn, or sorry, during next turn, they will still be angry because they haven't gotten their food yet. And uh, as the play number two only have taken two actions, and there is a third one available, uh, let's try and give them satisfy at least one of them. The problem, though, is that the player doesn't have any bacon, uh, only have eggs and no chicken. So the only one can go for is this one. But I have bacon, so we can help each other out. I can play the bacon and the other player can play the eggs. If it would have been my turn, I would have both. So I could do, have done it on my own. If a single player can do this, what you have to do is that you have to pick a card that has the same or higher number than that guest. Which means, as I mentioned earlier, the higher numbers are interesting guests to get because then you more quickly gather the points you need to win the game. But they're also more difficult to serve because you need to have a six in this case to serve this guest. Um, but this guest only need a three or higher. 
So I'll be playing this uh, lovely fox here and I will bring the food. And what happens then is that this is flipped over, they finish their food and now they can't get dissatisfied. Uh, and when, next time we draw two or six, they will leave the restaurant. So we'll, they can sit around for a while now and digest the food and chit chat. But now it's the other player's turn and that player can't fulfill the order. So I need my help thing though is that both players that play uh, or contribute ingredients must play a card so uh, maybe i only had the one here and that player uh, mm, let's see had a yeah doesn't matter really a five uh, it could have been a, an herbivore even another herbivore so like this so now i bring one and that player brings one and the sum here of these cards must be equal to or higher than that. So to be able to serve these uh, parties of six, then maybe you can cooperate and it's easier to do it. Uh, as I'm spending a card here, I will have one fewer cards when com card when it comes to my turn because I don't get to replenish to, just because I'm uh, helping out here. But we can do this. We serve the customer. They become happy, we flip this over, we discard these two. There is one more thing. If I send a, um, a carnivore here, oh, sorry, oh, I did the wrong here. I actually sent the herbivore and that is not good uh, because if I send someone who's in a predator-prey relationship, they will become angry. But I am actually good because this is a large herbivore and this is a small carnivore. So it doesn't matter. They're not in a predator-prey relationship. It doesn't do anything. Had this guest have had a cloud like this, if I send an animal of the exact same type, uh, sort, not type, not the color, it's the actual type of animal, then they will become happy because we made an effort and we will move one of these back here. So that's uh, this serving the, uh, bringing the food to the guests, I guess I would say uh, rules wise, the most complex part. And then we keep drawing cards and uh, the cards will activate different parts of the restaurant and we need to keep up, we need to get the ingredients and we need to uh, act promptly. Um, how do you remove stars, uh, sorry, clouds from here then? Well, as soon as you have happy customers of one type of animal that passes an equal multiple or an even multiple of five, then you move one star, uh, cloud back to the mushroom. So when I reach five points for foxes, 10 points, 15, 20, I will move one back here. So that's of course one strategy to try to win the game, not go for all the animals, but instead trying to keep people happy here and just go for one animal type and move the stars back to the mushroom. So this is for restaurant. Uh, I can also mention that there is a very much simplified version, uh, the Cubs and Pups game mode. Uh, it removes a lot of these um, rules, uh, you don't use these, and yeah, it's, it simplifies the game a lot. I played this once with my eight-year-old daughter, and she's like, eh, let's do the, the full rules. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a neat uh, set of rules if you want to play this with young kids. Uh, because you can still you can still play it then. The theme is is very, uh, I mean it it draws kids and adults alike in I would say. So that's how you play for restaurant. <laughs>
yeah, setting up the game, not that complex, pretty simple, some tokens, uh, some cards, and the board. So that's, that's nothing special. Tear down, the same. Uh, no big hassle there. The, the gameplay then. I really enjoy this game. Somehow it reminds me of playing a computer game or one of those apps, you know, on your cell phone where you manage a restaurant. Of course, it's not real time, but you have the pressure there anyway. And um, I think the art is very nice. The components are nice. Uh, the balance of luck, brinkmanship, corporate, cooperative uh, opportunities, all of that, I think, is uh, it works and uh, it is interesting. I think this is a tremendous family game. Uh, my eight-year-old loves this game too. We play it a lot. Um, we win some, we lose some. The uh, simplified version, as I mentioned in the rules explanation, I think it's it's too simple. Uh, you have to to play that. We're talking five, six-year-olds, uh, maybe. When you come to the age of eight or something and you're not too uh, new to the board game world, then you easily can uh, make do with it or, or manage the more difficult rules. The playing time says four to five minutes, and I think that's uh, pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, depends on how much uh, discussion, of course. Um, the, Play numbers are eight to uh, sorry one to five, and uh, I think that you know with five players it might be a little bit sluggish, uh, so I wouldn't play it with more than four. But this is a common case when it comes to this kind of cooperative games. Um, one thing I really want to comment though, that is this box. Please, 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 board game publishers. Don't be creative with the boxes. I, I can appreciate different box sizes and stuff, but when it comes to box shapes, no. This one, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the attempt. This is supposed to look like uh, a takeaway box type that uh, apparently is more common in Hungary. That was the uh, uh, designer's explanation. But it's super flimsy. Uh, the, you know, the slanting sides doesn't really work uh, when you stand and make it stand up. You can't put anything on top of it. It's so soft. And the, the flaps here that you need to fit in here every time you're going to close the dock box, they, they become worn very quickly. And also, the bottom of the box is smaller than the board game tiles, uh, sorry, the, the um, game board tiles. So if you try to put them at the bottom, you will either break the box or break the tiles. So you need to put the components underneath the uh, game board tiles. And, and yeah, it's, I'm sorry, this is, this is not okay. <laughs> but this is actually my only complaint about the game. Otherwise, I really, really hope that this will get a wide distribution and the uh, um, uh, acknowledgement that it's worth. So very well done, uh, Cogitate Games, and uh, the best of luck. Uh, I really hope that you get a good distribution on this. Thank you.